John Lee elected as Hong Kong SAR's next chief executive. He received the endorsement of 1,416 election committee members, or some 99% of the votes. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Join John Lee, the sole candidate in the sixth chief executive race, is set to be Hong Kong's new leader with an overwhelming support from the election committee. More than 1,416 members voted in favor of Lee. That's 99.16 percent of the committee, a record approval rate never seen in the SAR. I hereby declare that the only candidate, Mr. John Lee Ka Chiu, is returned in the above-mentioned election. Congratulations. With that, the city is poised to be helmed by a police officer turned chief executive John Lee for the next five years. In total, he won 1,416 votes. In fact, shortly after ballot counting began, the former Secretary for Security had already passed a threshold of 750 votes of support from the election committee to qualify as elected. Only eight EC members voted against him. Four ballots were ruled invalid. Lee thanked the election committee for its support, which comprises fewer than 1,500 people in a city of over 7 million people. Taking the stage with Lee was his wife. In his victory speech, Lee vowed to bring in results-oriented governance. Government will be determined to confront the well-entrenched issues that have faced Hong Kong for many years, take decisive steps and adopt efficient and effective actions to resolve them. I look forward to all of us starting a new chapter together. A new chapter through deeper connection with the mainland to boost the city's economy and international competitiveness, Lee says. Among the election committee members we spoke to, many have pinned high hopes on John Lee's administration to turn over a new leaf for Hong Kong, especially on the possibility of border reopening. He's met all the, many of the international uh, um, chambers were very worried about, uh, you know, Hong Kong, and I've tried to <laughs> make them feel comfortable. So I think opening the border more, and, and, and I think China has his trust because he is security, comes from security, and China likes that. And I think the most important thing right now is to make sure that we can cross the border uh, in a timely manner, fairly soon. And we know that this is one of the issues that he, has been, he will be tackling, and uh, we look forward to uh, closely working with him. Lee will take office on July 1st, the 25th anniversary of Hong Kong's return to Chinese rule. Throughout the two-and-a-half-hour voting session, John Lee was present to greet voters in person. Six election committee members subject to quarantine cast their ballots in a voting station at the Penny's Bay camp. At 8 o'clock this morning, John Lee left his apartment in Ho Mantin and headed to the Exhibition and Convention Center. When asked if he's confident he would win, Lee smiled and wished everyone a happy Mother's Day. During voting hours, Lee stood at different areas outside the voting station and greeted the election committee members. Six members subject to quarantine cast their ballots in Penny's Bay. That ballot box, after disinfection, was the first to arrive at the vote counting station in the same location. Secretary for Constitutional and Mainland Affairs Eric Zhang accompanied the ballot boxes from the main voting area to the vote counting station. Zhang and Electoral Affairs Commission Chairman Barnabas Fung emptied the boxes as Lee witnessed the vote counting process on stage. After the result announcement, Lee boarded a government vehicle for the CE elect office located on the 26th floor of the Immigration Tower in Wan Chai. The office will assist Lee in building his team and ensure a smooth transition to the next administration. Meanwhile, security was beefed up before and after the election. Secretary for Security Chris Tang said the police would ensure the election is conducted in an orderly and safe manner. 
Roadblocks were set up at the Cross Harbor Tunnel and Thailand Tunnel. Following the election, police with special gear continued to patrol near Expo Road. Sharon Tang, TVB News. The Hong Kong and Macau Affairs Office and the Central Government's Liaison Office both issued statements to congratulate John Lee. Meanwhile, the city's sole non-pro-establishment lawmaker also threw his support behind Lee. Kim Long has details. As today's chief executive election comes to an end, many are ready for Hong Kong to start a new chapter. Starry Lee, chairwoman of the Democratic Alliance for the Betterment and Progress of Hong Kong, welcomed today's election result. We hope that John uh, can lead Hong Kong especially to uh, successfully fight against the pandemic so that we can resume uh, our normal life. Uh, and we want to see our economy recover speedily. Tik Chi Yun, the city's only non-pro-establishment lawmaker, also voted for Lee. We will not define ourselves as an anti-government group. So if the government perform well, we, we, we support. If the, the performance is well, if it's not good, and then we'll, we'll give them uh, some uh, criticism. We hope they understand that uh, different way we can come together and join hands to move forward about the Hong Kong development. As for lawmaker Michael Tian, he hopes the new CE can fix what he called the big gap between the administration and the civil servants. The policy makers can make decisions where it may not be even feasible to be implemented. All right. So where do you apply pressure and when do you listen to the civil servant and then change your promise to the public? Let's call President Andrew Leung is hopeful that the new administration will maintain a good relationship with the legislature. Chief Executive Kerry Lam issued a statement to congratulate Lee on his successful election. Lam added that she will ensure a seamless transition with the chief executive elect. Both the Hong Kong and Macau Affairs Office and the Central Government's Liaison Office issued statements to congratulate Lee. The two offices added that the election has further implemented the principle of patriots administering Hong Kong and demonstrated the advantages of the new electoral system. Macau Chief Executive Ho Yat Seng also congratulated Lee. After winning today's election, John Lee still needs to be appointed by the central government before he is eligible to take office on July 1st. Caleb Leung, TVB News. Chief Executive-elect John Lee has served in the police force for four decades before he assumed other senior roles in the government. Described by many as a loyal patriot, Lee has pledged to solve the city's deep-rooted problems with a results-oriented approach. Chrissy Khan tells us more. In early April, the then Chief Secretary for Administration John Lee announced his intention to join the chief executive race. This decision is made out of my loyalty to my country, my love for Hong Kong, and my sense of duty to Hong Kong people. Even though he is the sole candidate in the CE election, Lee has made an effort to meet different sectors of the community. Each and every time when I come to a place where I can meet people from different backgrounds, different ethnicity, I find it is the most precious time for learning and for making Hong Kong a better place to live. During his time as Secretary for Security, he was involved in several challenging issues, such as prohibiting the operations of the Hong Kong Nationalist Party in 2018 and pushing for the controversial extradition bill in 2019. The now withdrawn extradition bill faced strong opposition and triggered mass demonstration across the city. And the unrest continued until the Beijing-imposed national security law came into effect in June 2020. His involvement in the implementation of the national security law landed him on a U.S. sanction list. This later contributed to the termination of his campaign's YouTube channel by Google around two weeks ago. On press freedom, Lee said it already exists in the city just like the ID card, so there's no need to defend it. But he also has questions about part of the media sector. There have been people who try to uh, give the impression that they are doing media work, when in fact they are pursuing political and personal purposes, uh, which in fact has polluted uh, press freedom in Hong Kong. 
Two days prior to the CE election, Lee and his camping office held a camping rally at the exhibition and convention center, displaying the slogan, We and Us, a new chapter together. He promised that he will form a government that can work and be able to achieve his goals if he is elected. Christy Khan, TVB News. To the pandemic, Hong Kong reported 266 new COVID-19 cases today. Four of the cases are from a Yunlong hot pot restaurant that experienced an outbreak. The four individuals visited the restaurant in the morning of April the 1st, including a 67-year-old woman and a couple aged 56 and 58, respectively. They all sat separately in the central part of the premises. Their families were also tested, but came back with negative results. The fourth case is a 63-year-old individual who ate with one of the infected. As of now, the outbreak has infected eight of the restaurant's customers. Meanwhile, two more COVID patients, aged 72 and 85 respectively, died in public hospitals. Still ahead on tonight's news. For the first time, Sinn Féin captures the largest number of seats in the Northern Ireland Assembly. And Mother's Day celebrations in the city. Welcome back. Irish Nationalist Party Sinn Féin were among the big winners in the UK's local elections. The party captured the largest number of seats in the Northern Ireland Assembly for the first time. Danny Rao tells us more. Sinn Féin captured the largest number of seats in the Northern Ireland Assembly for the first time. With almost all votes counted from Britain's local elections, the Irish Nationalist Party secured 27 of the 90 available seats in the Assembly. The pro-UK Democratic Unionist Party, which has dominated Northern Ireland's political landscape for two decades, won 24 seats. Under the terms of the 1998 Good Friday Peace Agreement that ended decades of Catholic-Protestant conflict in Ulster, the posts of First Minister and Deputy First Minister must be divided between the biggest Unionist Party and the largest Nationalist one in Northern Ireland's Assembly. The local election victory means Sinn Féin, who are long linked to the paramilitary group the Irish Republican Army, is entitled to the position of First Minister for the first time since Northern Ireland was founded in 1921. The victory is therefore a significant historic milestone for the party which seeks a united Ireland. Today represents a very significant moment of change. It's a defining moment for our politics and for our people. Today ushers in a new era, which I believe presents us all with an opportunity to reimagine relationships in this society on the basis of fairness, on the basis of equality and on the basis of social justice. Irrespective of religious, political or social backgrounds, my commitment is to make politics work. However, the Sinn Féin victory will not lead to an immediate change in the status of Northern Ireland. Any referendum on leaving the UK must be permitted by Westminster and the lobbying process could take years. The appointment of a first minister could also be set to hit a snag. That's because the DUP said it will refuse to join a new government if there are no changes to the UK's post-Brexit Northern Ireland border arrangement protocol. The rules have seen customs and border checks imposed on some goods entering Northern Ireland from the rest of the UK. Daniel Rao, TVB News. Today is Mother's Day, with family-packed restaurants once again a common sight. Some eateries are showing optimism about a new boost in business. Timothy Lee has a story. <laughs> Cups raised, families laughing. This restaurant in Mongkok was fully booked. With relaxed social distancing measures, some came to lunch together as a family of eight. This youngster bought flowers for his grandmother and mother, while this one thanked his mother for treating her to a meal. A manager of this restaurant said business this Mother's Day grew by 30 percent following the relaxation of social distancing measures. He expects revenue to reach 60% of pre-COVID levels during evening business hours. Meanwhile, a hotel restaurant spokesperson said the loosening of anti-COVID measures prior to Mother's Day prompted more families to dine out. The restaurant was 80% pre-booked last week, with the vast majority being tables reserved for eight. Some mothers shared how they are spending the occasion with their children. 
It's just normal meal with our whole family, with the kids and also the elderly. It's the first time after we release the social distance policy. The first time for us to go out for the for the for the for the meal. She prepared some uh, cards and flowers. And uh, the most important, uh, the most I think is um, touch me. She helped me prepare the breakfast and told me uh, I can sleep until 8 a.m. To celebrate this special day, families in Hong Kong have filled up restaurants across the city to gather and dine. As anti-COVID measures are further relaxed, many mothers now feel safe to spend quality time with their children outside their homes. Timothy Lee, TVB News. That's the news. Thank you for watching.